look at uh, how we're making progress in ad blockers. And now, where, where was it? Princeton has come up with a way. <laughs> this is a, a university has done research. It's an motherboard called it an ad blocking super weapon. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> you're scared now. Well, this unfortunately only affects uh, banner ads on websites. Um, but they're, what they're doing is they're actually looking at the pr team of, at Princeton and Stanford have, looking at the actual content. This will block native content as well. So that's one of the things hmm. uh, when, a, you know, websites know that you're not reading the ads, whether you're blocking them or not, you're not seeing them. So what they do is they make content that looks like it's real content, that, mm -hmm. an article you might read, except it's not. It's an ad posing as real content. We call it native content. And it's all the rage now. Again, we will never do that to you. Yep. Uh, but lots of sites, uh, including some pretty well-known sites. Have some more nature box. Later. I know, right? <laughs> you know, there's nothing <laughs> wrong. They didn't we just no, have a little bit of, experience a native little bit of, um, No, it was not native content. That was an ad. It was clearly an ad, wasn't it? Yeah, but it, you're here as part of your show doing it. I feel like that's it's, a blurry it's on, it's on the edge, right? I think I think for something to be oh, native. Oh, come on. At home, you at home. You knew when I put out the nature box and we put up the lower yeah, third right. that that was an ad. It would be different if we if we suddenly were talking about how great quinoa was and it comes in many forms, including the snack from nature box, which is sort of what native native stuff is. It's like, yeah, it's but a, native doesn't it's a mean story. trickery. It just means I think it means trickery. It does? Okay. I think there's some, well, yeah. I think if I you think talk to exists. a salesperson, they'll say no. They, oh, yeah. The New York Times <laughs> even says no, but it exists to trick people into reading content thinking it's real ed editorial content when it's not. In any event, clearly these guys think it is because this will block native content. Uh, it mm. also looks for, um, you know, there's many. Uh, Ads that, including Facebook ads, that bypass ad blockers that, that can't be easily blocked. This will do it. And the reason it works, and watch how long this loophole exists, is because the FTC says that ads have to be clearly labeled so that a human can recognize them. Well, that so means... So can a machine. So can a machine. <laughs> and so they're looking for those, you know, weasel words that indicate, oh, what you're seeing is an advertisement. And so as long as the FTC continues to require advertisements to clearly labeled, be labeled, uh, these ad blockers uh, will work. As the author points out in his Motherboard piece on this, Motherboard is supported by ads. So Jason Kobler writes, so I'm probably biting the hand that feeds me talking about this. Uh, and this is part of the ethical issue is we got to find a way to pay for content um, while not offending our viewers. And so that's why I bring this up because... Uh, you know, clearly we have to find it. I mean, we need to, we need to pay for our stuff. You need to pay for your stuff. Uh, but we don't also want to invade privacy. So I think there needs to be some sort of relationship between uh, the content creators and the, and the, and the community so that we don't step on you and by giving you ads. So you can, if you're curious about the Princeton Stanford ad blocker, there's a, a Chrome extension that is not a final version. It's a proof of concept. It's not fully functional. I'm skeptical of any declaration that this will end the war, though, because I feel like what this will do is Escalate something that may actually be a little more insidious, yeah. which is it'll make the content... If you're using computer vision, right, then you could also use computer vision to design ad units and other content <sighs> that is not as visible by the computer vision, which probably means that your ad, your banner blindness will go away. Right. So that they will create even more diabolical ad units that y even humans can't determine yeah i feel like these stanford ads. and princeton people should find something better to do with their time oh <laughs> if they're so smart do something right maybe i think one of the big uh, the, the the shame of the web is that the advertising on it is so bad yeah because advertising you know advertising is but not fundamentally that. bad in fact if you remember the great days of, of of magazines like people loved the ads that's right ads can impart information they that's can be right. beautiful they can be interesting good tv ads can be good advertising can be good it doesn't have to be bad but on the web advertising is almost always bad and because it's been driven to this lowest common denominator auction based kind of stuff and so, I mean, it's a shame because I think like it's kind of ruining it for everyone that the uh, the web the web ads are so terrible.